All right, hello folks. So in this presentation, we're going to be talking about the theory of evolution and its mechanism, natural selection, which really is what allows it to work. Um, and also some of the evidence as well that supports the theory of evolution. So um, let's get into it. All right, a couple of things. Um, when you think about evolution, you want to think of the traits of organisms. You want to think of genetics. You want to think of how things reproduce and what structures allow or help them live and survive and reproduce. Um, so uh, let's continue on. So when we talk about evolution, we talk about Charles Darwin, who is, or we think of Charles Darwin, who is the scientist who first um, published along with others input uh, a book that describes how evolution could work there's our objectives you can see those in the PowerPoint that's posted on the website if you like to take a closer look um, and here's our first one so Charles Darwin um, our objective is to explain the theory of evolution through natural selection and how it was developed um, Darwin and evolution so first we just have to kind of talk about the journey of Charles Darwin and how that journey helped him come up with this um, revolutionary idea that now is the underlying principle of biology. Um, from here we've studied how molecules work in biology, we've studied how different cell structures work, um, how those structures keep things alive. All of those things that we've studied that help organisms survive and reproduce um, are really have been molded and shaped by this process of evolution and natural selection. So it is really the underlying um, um, important um, driving factor that we see in, in living things. So um, the puzzle of life's diversity, here's the kind of questions we're looking at. Biological diversity, there's a lot of different things on this earth, many of which we can't see with our naked eye, but there is much, much, much biodiversity, meaning many different types of living things. Um, the scientific explanation for life's diversity includes scientific principles, so the things we know about how the world works so far based on the evidence we've collected, observations, what we can see, and the hypotheses that make up evolutionary theory. And this is um, an ongoing investigation. Uh, but so far, all evidence points in the direction of what we're going to learn here. Um, so evolution simply means change over time. Um, and in the terms of biology, it means how modern organisms have descended or come from ancient organisms. And to the right, you can see I have the picture of the dogs. That's an example of not a natural occurrence where instead we've actually modified dogs. But they all descend from one common ancestor, which would be a wolf. Um, and all of these different forms that you see are um, have been derived by man by selecting the traits that we want. If we want a dog that's short and furry, we take short and furry dogs and breed them until those traits are more common. Um, other way around, if we want a big tall dog, we will um, breed dogs that are tall and get those traits to show up in their offspring. And over time, the form will change. So Charles Darwin, he's the biggest contributor to our theory of evolution. Um, many have helped shape Darwin's ideas and continue to work with Darwin's ideas and take them further. Um, but um, Charles Darwin was the first to really start to put all of this together uh, in a way that, that worked. Charles Darwin took a five-year trip um, on the HMS Beagle, which was a British ship. Um, and that ship went around the world uh, discovering and collecting um, and Charles Darwin was the naturalist aboard that ship. Um, he collected evidence, he made important observations uh, and this really over time, remember he's in this boat, he's sailing from place to place for five years. As he's in the boat he's looking at all of the things he's collected and observing them and he starts to come up with this new idea about how life on earth works. Um, and now we're even applying his theories to life, possible life on other planets. So little did Charles Darwin know how big of an idea um, he was constructing. 
So aboard the Beagle, during his studies, Darwin came into contact with, uh, came to a scientific explanation for the diversity on this planet. Remember, he's a London boy. He's going around and he's discovering things that he's never seen before. Um, all kinds of different animals and creatures and fossils. Um, and these are really playing on his mind. And in his journal, um, he's writing a lot of question marks because first thing you need to do as a scientist is really make those observations, but then you ask a question. And Charles Darwin had many questions about how life on this planet is so diverse and why. Um, and there are so many different forms from plants to bacteria to fungus to animals. Um, there, there is a ton of biodiversity out there. So just to give you an idea, Darwin, Darwin made many observations. Um, he saw a lot of diversity um, in the Brazilian rainforest. In one day, he collected 68 species of beetle. Um, and this started to make him think, well, there are many species that inhabit this earth. What Charles Darwin also noticed was that these species are very diverse. So each organism is well suited to its environment. Um, and this included being able to survive and reproduce. Uh, one good example is the golden eagle. These talons are very well suited uh, to help the eagle catch prey. Um, you can see also the beak is perfect for um, cutting and ripping and this bird is really designed very well for what it does. Another thing Charles Darwin saw were fossils. Um, he collected many fossils and one famous example is the uh, giant sloth which is probably existed around the time of the saber-toothed tiger. They're extinct now but he realized and recognized that this animal has the same structures as today's regular old sloth. So um, he saw that animals in the past that are now extinct seem to be related to animals that are here in the future and that was very important. And also at this time Darwin's starting to realize the earth might be much older than previously thought. So here's his question. Why organisms disappeared? So why did things become extinct? Um, how were they related to the living species? So this was a question that Darwin asked because in Darwin's time, everything on Earth was static, meaning it had always been there the way that he saw it then. Um, but he's starting to question this logic because the evidence is changing um, or is conflicting with what he previously knew. And that's really a great example of the nature of science and what, how important it is to be able to change your ideas based on new evidence. So the Galapagos Islands, uh, towards the end of his journey, Jar Darwin visited here. They're an island, uh, a set of volcanic islands off the coast of South America. They arose from the ocean. They're volcanic, so they didn't break off of mainland South America. Um, and this really is where Char Charles Darwin started to um, put together his ideas about how evolution could work. Um, remember, he's sailing around. He's reading books by others. He's writing in his Voyager blog column so people know who he is. They're reading his column back in England about his journeys. Um, and Charles Darwin's doing a lot of thinking. And when he gets to these islands, a lot of that thinking starts to culminate into the idea of evolution being possible. Um, and this is what the islands kind of look like. It's a small group. They're in close proximity, but each island has a slightly different uh, climate. And actually, locals can recognize animals um, from each island based on their adaptations or what they look like. So uh, in the Galapagos Island he studied the tortoises um, of the islands and marine iguanas. The shapes of the tortoise shells determine the different island of the tortoise. So each tortoise is different but they look very much alike. It all just depends on which island they're on. Also um, Darwin rode the tortoises which is now illegal. So if you go there, don't ride the tortoises. Um, he noticed that um, these finches, which he called mockingbirds, um, he noticed that some were brown, uh, or they were mostly brown. Um, some searched for seeds, but the seeds that they ate depended on um, their beak shape, or really their beak shape depended on the seeds that they ate. So he noticed, though, that they were all very similar, however, they were different species. And, he's, and there were also similar species on mainland South America that looked a lot like this, but weren't exactly the same. And you can see all the different beak shapes for different tools. Um, this bird eats insects, this bird eats leaves, this one eats large seeds. 
Um, this one needs buds and fruit, so it can kind of tear into fruit with that little hook. And this one needs grubs. Um, and each beak is specifically designed for that. And Charwin, Charles Darwin noticed this and questioned it. And questioned if at one time they were all one species of finch. So he collected a lot of birds along with everything else. He collected all kinds of animals from each island or sketched them. Um, and he took a lot of data to try to figure this out. And there are many strange um, animals on the Galapagos, like the blue-footed booby or the red-footed booby, uh, different sea lions, the uh, land iguana, the marine iguana. Um, so he's taking a look at all these species, which look a lot like things from South America. Um, but each one is very similar. However, they're a little different depending on which island they live on. Oops. So his hypothesis was different animals of each island had once been members of the same species. So what Darwin is saying is, and this is very new, and Darwin just dis was disturbed really by this idea because it completely went against um, his religion and what the beliefs of the day were, um, that there was a common ancestor, most likely in South America, that by some chance encounter ended up on the Galapagos Islands. And from there, that ancestral population diversified based on the changing environment into all the different finch species that you see in the Galapagos, which was a very new idea because we're talking about the creation of new species, which um, defied the logic of Darwin's day. So Darwin knew he had to get a lot of evidence to show this was true. The problem is, this probably happened over a very large amount of time. So it's difficult to observe evolution in action. Um, some more pictures of the birds. OK, so here's how Dar uh, what contributed to Darwin's understanding. Um, we have ideas and theories uh, that shaped Darwin's ideas. So the idea of evolution was actually around long before Darwin. And there were other things that influenced him. He didn't just come up with this right away out of nowhere. He was influenced by a lot of the other scientists around him and other work that had been done. So our objective is to describe the contributions of Lamarck to the theory of evolution. So in Darwin's time, you have to remember it's the Industrial Revolution. England's doing quite well. They're branching out. They're discovering things. Darwin's a part of this movement. Um, common beliefs of the day. Um, the Earth was much younger than we think it is now. Uh, people thought it was about a few thousand years old. Um, and nothing had changed about the planet or life on it since its beginning. Darwin is obviously thinking the Earth is much older and that life actually has changed. So let's see what kind of stuff influenced him. So many discoveries paved the way. First was the fossil record. It's the Industrial Revolution. People are digging up bones um, of dinosaurs when they're looking for coal and saying, what are these? How did these get here? These organisms aren't here anymore. Uh, what's going on? So there's a lot of question marks coming up. They're finding fossils of fish way up on mountains and trying to justify how they got there. Um, so there's a lot of new evidence and new things to see that are kind of making people think twice about how old the world might be and what happened in the past. Various periods of creation um, preceded by catastrophic events, um, killing species is how people justify this. So they thought that maybe these things were organisms of another era and they were killed by catastrophic events uh, like floods or horrible weather. Um, and they're just trying to justify and explain or rationalize how the, these pieces of evidence have gotten to where they are. Um, so an ancient changing earth, this is a new, a very new idea. Hooten and Lydell are uh, geologists of the day, and they start to postulate that the earth is many millions of years old, um, and processes on earth in the past um, are the same that operate in the present. So they're starting to say, okay, the Earth is very old and it's been changing for a long time. And this is really influencing Darwin. He's on the Beagle sailing around the world and he's reading the work of these men and it's influencing him and giving him basically more um, evidence to uh, show that evolution is possible. Um, we'll skip that for now. So organisms gain or lose certain traits during their lifetime by use or disuse. This is the idea of Lamarck, use and disuse. Um, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck was a French naturalist and he um, was observing that animals were very well adapted to their environment. And he tried to explain this. 
Um, Lamarck believed that the Earth was only a few thousand years old, so his theory kind of fits in with that, that logic. So he believed that traits will be passed on to their offspring, which is important, and he said this will eventually lead to a change in species. Mm -hmm. So let's look at his ideas. So in Lamarck's observations, he saw that all organisms have a tendency toward perfection, meaning they're very well adapted to their environment. They can survive well, such as the eagle with the big talons, very good at catching fish and flying and seeing and um, doing everything it needs to do to survive. Um, he said that animals are constantly changing, which is a relatively new idea, because remember, everybody thinks that nothing has changed since it's gotten on Earth, like an eagle, um, and acquire new features more suited to their environment in which they live. Um, use and disuse, he called this, meaning if you use your muscles, they'll get big, and you'll pass them on to your, those big muscles on to your offspring. If you don't use them, they'll get small, and you won't pass them on to your offspring, or your offspring will have small muscles too. Um, so basically, if you use something, its appearance gets bigger, or is, it's the way you need it. Um, if an organ is not used, it will decrease in size and potentially disappear, like the legs of a whale or something like that. Um, so inheritance of acquired traits kind of looks like this. Um, acquired characteristics are inherited. So a giraffe needs a long neck. It uses its long neck, so it has a long neck, and it passes that on to its offspring. Example would be like weightlifting. If I lift a ton of weights and I get very strong, um, just because I have big muscles, am I going to produce a child with big muscles? Most likely not. And uh, Lamarck realized this, or Lamarck tried to explain evolution, however people realized that it wasn't quite possible, so um, he was ridiculed uh, for his ideas, although we still remember Lamarck for good reason, um, and the reason for that is um, he was the first to realize that organisms are adapted to their environment, and he contributed and made a, took a, an attempt at explaining how evolution could work. Um, he didn't know how traits were inherited, um, he thought behavior affected your traits, and it really doesn't. Um, so he was uh, disproven, but he did pave the way for others like Darwin. Um, Darwin was the first to actually find a mechanism that could explain how evolution works, and we call that natural selection. Um, and over time, uh, natural selection shows that evolution is possible and um, can influence how organisms uh, grow and develop.